Welcome to Lesson 1C, Dimensions, Units, and Significant Digits. In this lesson, we'll discuss the difference between dimensions and units, demonstrate the proper way to do unit conversions, review the concepts of accuracy and precision, talk about the number of significant digits. I'll do a few example problems. What is a dimension? It's the characterization of a variable without a number associated with it. For example, length is a dimension. What is a unit? It's a way to assign a number to a dimension. For example, meter. Meter is a unit of the dimension length. Don't confuse dimensions and units. I find that students often have problems with converting units. Here's the proper way to convert units using unity conversion ratios. By definition and by the name unity, all unity conversion ratios are equal to 1, or unity. So, we can plug a unity conversion ratio into any equation anywhere we desire. Some examples of unity conversion ratios in the English system 12 inches per foot, 60 seconds per minute, 1 kilogram per 2.2046, etc. pound mass, Newton second squared per kilogram meter. All of these are equal to 1. 12 inches is equivalent to 1 foot. 60 seconds is equivalent to 1 minute. You can put a 1 here if you want. A kilogram is about 2.2 pound mass. These are dimensions of mass, and these are the units for this unity conversion factor. This is just a conversion factor from Newton's second law. Force is mass times acceleration. This is also equal to 1. I'll add here all unity conversion ratios are unitless or dimensionless. All four of these examples have the value 1 and they have no unit. Here's an example. Suppose the mass of an object is 2.00 kilograms. How much does this mass weigh on Earth in units of pound force? We simply apply Newton's second law, F equal ma, in this case weight equal mg. Since weight and gravitational acceleration are in the same direction, we can write the scalar form in that direction, W equal mg. Plug in our numbers, m is 2.00 kilogram, g is 9.807 meter per second squared. Now let's use this unity conversion factor that we talked about previously. A newton second squared is a kilogram meter. And you can look up this conversion factor. One pound force is 4.448 newtons. I cross off units, top and bottom, kilograms cancel, meters cancel, second squareds cancel, and newtons cancel, leaving us with pound force, which is what we want. Plug this into my calculator. I get 4.409404 pound force. I'll approximate that as 4.41 pound force. This is my final answer to three significant digits. We'll talk about significant digits shortly. Notice that these two are unity conversion factors. Do all unit conversions this way, using unity conversion factors, and you'll never go wrong. Also, always write your units in all your equations, and make sure the units cancel out properly to get the final answer. There are many occasions when I've found a mistake in my equations or something I wrote down here because of units. I have a two-minute fluid mechanics YouTube video about unity conversion ratios where you can find more examples. Here's a short clip from that video. Yeah, thanks, but can, can you show me a harder problem? Yes, I can. Hello, Albert. Oh, someone is there. I will zoom later. No, please stay. You will enjoy this next example. Is that really him? Yeah. You're my hero. Here's an example. How much mass is contained in one piece of M&M candy? Well, I counted 54 M&Ms in this bag. We divide mass by the number and get 0.887 grams per M&M. So how much energy is available in one M&M candy? Here's the proper solution using unity conversion ratios. We use Albert's famous equation, M times C squared, and we string together these three unity conversion ratios. We get about 8 times 10 to the 13th joules. For comparison, the average U.S. home uses about 4 times 10 to the 10th joules in a year. So, relatively speaking, one M&M can power 2,000 homes for a year. I like this example. Let's talk a little bit about accuracy and precision. Accuracy error, also called inaccuracy, is the value of one reading minus the true or correct value, assuming we know the correct value, which is not always the case. For a set of measurements, accuracy is a measure of how close the average reading is to the true value. Accuracy is generally associated with repeatable fixed errors, also called systematic errors. Precision error is the value of one reading minus the average of all the readings. You don't have to know a correct value to calculate the precision. 
For a set of measurements, precision is a measure of the resolution and repeatability of the instrument. Precision is associated with unrepeatable random errors rather than repeatable fixed errors or systematic errors. Here's a simple example shooting arrows at a target. Two people shoot arrows at a target, person A and person B. Which is more accurate and which is more precise? I just noticed the spelling error. And then think about which person is a better archer. If we average all these shots, the average is somewhere in here. Thinking about our definitions, A is more precise. If we average all these shots from person B, it's somewhere in the middle. Again, by our definitions, B is more accurate. A is actually not very accurate. It's pretty far from the bullseye. B is not very precise since there's a lot of scatter, but the average is in the bullseye, so B is more accurate. So A is more precise and B is more accurate. Let's think about which one is better. Well, since person A is very precise, all he or she has to do is adjust the zero, perhaps adjust the sighting on the bow so that this clump of shots would land in the bullseye. Person B is not very steady. He or she doesn't need to adjust the sights or anything. It's accurate. The only way B can improve is by becoming more steady, perhaps leaning his or her elbow on a tree stump or something like that. I would say that A is much easier to correct since person A has a much steadier hand at shooting arrows. Now let's discuss significant digits. First of all, the number of significant digits is determined by precision, not accuracy. We'll look at two cases, multiplying or dividing, and adding or subtracting. The first one's a lot easier. The answer is given with the same number of significant digits as that of the variable with the least number of significant digits. I refer you to the example I did earlier. The mass is given to three significant digits. G is given to four significant digits, so the variable with the least number of significant digits is the mass, namely three significant digits. That's why we give our final answer to three significant digits. I summarize by saying that mass has three significant digits, which is the least number of significant digits in the problem. If you multiply several variables together, find the one with the least number of significant digits and state your answer in that same number of significant digits. When adding or subtracting, the number of significant digits in the answer is determined by the leftmost decimal column that contains a least significant digit. This is best illustrated by example, and I found another typo. This should be significant digits. Let's add the numbers 3.02 and 0 .00803 and express the answer properly. What I do is align the decimal points, and you can do the simple addition. What is the leftmost decimal column that contains a least significant digit? Well, that would be this 3.02, and it would be the 2 column here. So our answer is good only to this decimal place, the second place after the decimal point. How do we know that? Well, there's nothing here. This could be a 2, 3, 8. This could be a 4, 2, 1. It would change the answer if we added those digits in, but we have no way of knowing what those digits actually are. My final answer is 3.03 .03 to three significant digits. A couple final comments. Most engineering analyses are accurate and precise to only three, sometimes four significant digits. In this course, always answer to three significant digits unless instructed otherwise. And that's a good rule of thumb for just about everything you do in life. However, to avoid round off error, always keep a few more digits for intermediate calculations. For example, if I was to put this number into another equation, I would include all these digits even though these are not significant. This avoids round off error. I'd do the same here. I'd keep at least five of these digits in a subsequent problem. In other words, if this value is an intermediate variable in another equation, I would not put in this. I would put in this to avoid round off error. Finally, I have another short YouTube video called The Significance of Significant Digits. I'll show a little clip here. I don't understand significant digits, especially when adding or subtracting. All right, I'll share my slides on that. This number has five significant digits. This one only three. These conversion ratios have infinite number. Since the lowest of these is three, we round to three significant digits. Our final answer is 0.735 newtons. We wouldn't report the answer like this. These digits are meaningless and not significant. Here's an example. Add these two numbers. We align the two numbers by the decimal point and then add. The least significant digit of this first number is the eight. The least significant digit of the second number is seven. This eight represents the leftmost column with a least significant digit. So this second decimal place is the least significant digit in our answer. We round to 13.74 for our final answer. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.